Imagine a 133-kilometer ribbon of solar panels cutting across a desert. 5 million panels, a 100 billion yuan price tag, and enough sunlight to power millions of homes. From a satellite, it looks like a strange blue ocean in the sand. Governments and engineers stared at those images and asked, How did this happen? Start with that single striking image and then tighten the focus. This isn't just a big solar farm. It's called the photovoltaic Great Wall, built where dunes once won. The panels generate electricity, but they also act like a shield slowing wind, shading the ground, and creating pockets where plants can grow. It's a triple purpose idea, energy, farming, and sand control, all in one design. This moment, the satellite image that made experts do a double take, frames the whole journey. It promises a mystery. How do you fix a desert? A human effort, millions of volunteers and huge investments. And a technical answer, clever engineering. That promise is what keeps people watching. We'll explain the problem, the fight, and the surprising solution. But to understand why 5 million panels were needed, we have to go back. 60 years ago, this land was being eaten by wind and dust, and the problem was getting worse. Next, we'll look at what desertification actually did to people and places, and why China called it the cancer of the earth. More than 60 years ago, China faced a disaster that wasn't caused by war or politics, but by nature itself. The desert was moving. Year after year, dunes crept forward, swallowing farmland, villages, and even whole towns. It wasn't just sand. It was survival at stake. At the time, China's desertified land covered about 2.6 million square kilometers. That's nearly the size of Argentina, or more than a quarter of China's territory. Inner Mongolia alone had a desert area as big as two Germanys combined. When sandstorms blew, they didn't stop at the border. Dust clouds spread across northern China, reaching as far as South Korea and North Korea, blacking out skies and ruining harvests. Crops failed. Livestock died. Families who depended on the land were left helpless. People called desertification the cancer of the earth, because, like a cancer, it spread slowly but relentlessly, eating away at everything in its path. International experts even warned that China might become the first country in history to be completely swallowed by desert. The picture looked hopeless. But instead of giving up, China decided to fight back. And that fight began with something both massive and human mobilizing ordinary people to push back against the desert, one seedling and one shovel at a time. In the 1970s and 80s, the desert wasn't slowing down. It was accelerating. Every year, more villages were lost more fields turned to dust. For families living on the front lines, it felt like the earth itself was pushing them out. Sandstorms would roll in like giant walls of dust, blotting out the sun for hours. Imagine standing in a football stadium while a tidal wave of sand pours in. That's how sudden and overwhelming it felt. Farmers who had planted crops in spring often watched them vanish under dunes before harvest. Herds of sheep and cattle couldn't find grass to graze, leaving entire communities without food or income. Think of it this way. In the United States, when a hurricane hits, it lasts a few days. But in northern China, desertification was like a permanent disaster season, stretching on year after year with no relief. It wasn't one storm, it was a creeping takeover of the land itself. This growing crisis wasn't just about sand, it was about people. If nothing changed, millions would be forced to migrate. And when an environmental problem forces mass migration, it turns into a social and political problem too. That looming threat became a turning point. China realized it couldn't just watch the desert expand. It had to fight back. And the counterattack started with something bold, calling on millions of citizens to plant trees and stabilize the land, turning ordinary people into the frontline soldiers of a green revolution. Faced with a desert that seemed unstoppable, China launched a counterattack, not with weapons, but with shovels, seeds, and sheer human will. The government called on its citizens to join the fight, and millions answered. Starting in the late 20th century, China created desert research institutes and organized campaigns where people volunteered to plant vegetation in shifting sands. The number is staggering. Nearly 10 million volunteers joined. City workers, students, farmers, even soldiers, people from all walks of life traveled to the edge of the desert to take part. It was like organizing a national marathon, except instead of running, everyone was planting trees. Year after year, Waves of volunteers dug holes, carried water, and laid down grass grids. These grass grids worked like nets. They trapped sand, slowed the wind, 
and gave seedlings a chance to survive. This wasn't a quick fix. Deserts don't change overnight, but it was the first real pushback. Ordinary people proved that with enough hands and enough persistence, even dunes could be slowed. It also showed something bigger. The government and its citizens were willing to think long-term, even if the results took decades. But planting alone wasn't enough. To win against such a massive threat, China needed something bigger, a national strategy that would stretch across nearly half the country. That's when the idea of building a green Great Wall was born. Planting by hand slowed the desert, but China needed something far bigger, a project as massive as the problem itself. The answer was bold, build a new kind of Great Wall. Not from stone, but from trees. In 1978, China launched the Three North Shelter Belt Program, often called the Green Great Wall. The goal create a living shield of forests stretching across the north, northwest, and northeast. This wall would block wind, hold soil, and give farmland a chance to recover. The plan was set for 73 years, broken into eight phases. By the time it's complete, it will cover 45% of China's land area, nearly half the country. Imagine a protective green belt stretching the distance from New York to Los Angeles but made of trees. That's the scale we're talking about. Just as the original Great Wall defended China from invading armies, this green wall was designed to defend it from an invading desert. It marked a shift from temporary fixes to a generational strategy. The desert wasn't just seen as an environmental issue anymore. It was treated like a national security threat. And over the years, results began to show. The endless march of sand was slowing and in some places it was even reversed. Next, we'll see how decades of effort turned into measurable victories. For decades, millions planted, watered, and waited. Slowly, the desert began to change. What once looked hopeless started to show results. Results big enough to measure from space. China has now completed over 282 million mu of sand control tasks. That's an area bigger than the entire United Kingdom. About 118 million MU of desertified land has been effectively stabilized, and nearly 26.6 million MU has been closed off for protection, allowing nature to heal itself. Since the project began, China has planted more than 106 billion trees. That's enough to circle the Earth's equator more than 200 times if you line them up. Forest coverage in the three North Shelter Belt area rose from 12.4% to nearly 14%, small in percentage, but huge when spread across such a vast region. Sandstorms, once a yearly nightmare, began to weaken. Farmers saw land restored, crops grow back, and villages that once seemed doomed found new stability. In total, about 53% of all desert land that could be managed has already been brought under control. This was the first proof that the fight wasn't just symbolic. The desert could be pushed back. But just as the world began to notice China's progress, Something unexpected happened. Satellites picked up a strange, massive blue formation in the desert, sparking disbelief and even suspicion abroad. That mysterious sighting wasn't a mirage. It was the birth of China's next move, a project so ambitious it was called the Photovoltaic Great Wall. One day, U.S. satellites scanning northern China captured something unusual, a massive blue shape stretching across the desert. At first glance, it looked almost unreal, like a digital glitch, but when the images were analyzed, engineers realized it was something new, a gigantic solar installation. This wasn't a secret military base or a hidden city. It was a sea of solar panels forming what is now called the Photovoltaic Great Wall. Spanning more than 133 kilometers, the project stunned international observers. Some American engineers even went public claiming the images must be fake or exaggerated because no country could possibly transform deserts so quickly. It's like seeing the Grand Canyon suddenly filled with skyscrapers. Your first instinct would be disbelief. That's how many outsiders felt when they saw the Kabuki Desert lined with millions of solar panels. This satellite discovery shifted the conversation from can China stop the desert to has China actually turned the desert into an energy hub? Suspicion only made the project more famous because whether people believed it or not, the world was paying attention. So what exactly did the satellites capture? To answer that, we need to zoom in on the Kabuki Desert itself, the place where China is building its most ambitious desert energy experiment yet. The Kabuki Desert in Inner Mongolia was once known as one of China's most lifeless regions. For decades, locals called it a sea of death. Endless dunes where nothing grew, sandstorms swept villages, and poverty trapped communities. 
But today, Kabuki is making headlines for something completely different. It has become the heart of China's desert transformation. Kabuki covers about 18,600 square kilometers, roughly the size of Kuwait. For most of history, it was written off as uninhabitable. But over the last 30 years, China turned it into a testing ground for innovation. Desert farming, renewable energy, and ecological restoration all rolled into one. Imagine taking the Sahara Desert and filling part of it with farmland, solar farms, and green belts. That's the scale of the change. The biggest breakthrough came with the photovoltaic Great Wall. Vast fields of solar panels now cover parts of Kabuki. These panels don't just produce clean electricity, they also shade the sand, reducing evaporation and making it possible for grass and crops to grow underneath. In short, the desert now generates both energy and life. Kabuki is proof of concept. What was once a symbol of hopelessness is now a model for the world, showing how deserts can be turned from a threat into a resource. But this wasn't just about green energy. It was about building resilience for the future. And that's where the dual benefits of desert solar farms come in. What makes China's desert solar farms revolutionary isn't just the clean energy. It's the way they solve two problems at once, powering cities while healing the land. The photovoltaic Great Wall in deserts like Kabuki produces massive amounts of renewable electricity. In fact, China is now the world's largest solar power producer, and desert projects are a big reason why. But the panels also create a second, less obvious benefit. They change the desert's environment. So here's how it works. Solar panels block direct sunlight, lowering ground temperatures and trapping moisture. This makes it easier for grass, shrubs, and even crops to survive beneath and around them. The panels are arranged in rows that act like windbreaks, reducing sand movement. It's kind of like putting a giant umbrella over a patch of hot sand. Suddenly it's cooler, calmer, and life has a chance to return. In Kabuki, the combination of panels and vegetation has slowed desert expansion and restored ecosystems. Locals now raise medicinal herbs, graze animals, and even farm under solar grids. What was once barren sand is becoming productive land. This dual role, electricity plus ecology, is why the project caught global attention. It's not just a climate solution, it's an economic and environmental lifeline. And the story doesn't stop there. These projects are also reshaping communities, creating jobs, and giving desert residents a reason to stay and build a future. Behind every solar panel and every restored dune are the people who live in the desert. For them, China's desert transformation isn't just about climate goals. It's about survival, jobs, and dignity. In Kabuki and other desert regions, locals who once struggled with poverty are now earning steady incomes. Solar farms created jobs in construction, maintenance, and agriculture under the panels. Families who used to migrate out of desperation now have reasons to stay. Think of it like turning a ghost town into a booming factory town. Except here, the factory is made of sunlight and sand. Reports show the Kabuki Desert's transformation lifted over 100,000 residents out of poverty. Farmers plant herbs, graze sheep, or grow crops beneath solar arrays. Youth who once left for cities are finding work in renewable energy projects at home. Entire villages are seeing electricity, roads, and schools improve because of the investments. It's a reminder that big environmental projects don't just change landscapes, they change lives. For people who once feared the desert as a curse, it's now becoming a source of stability and opportunity. But China's desert projects aren't just about lifting its own people. The country is also using this success as soft power exporting technology, expertise, and even hope to the rest of the world. China's desert miracle didn't stay a domestic story for long. As images of green belts and solar seas spread worldwide, other countries facing the same desert nightmares began to pay close attention. From Africa's Sahel region to the Middle East, desertification threatens food security, water supplies, and human survival. The United Nations has praised China's progress, calling the Kabuki model a blueprint for others. Already, Chinese companies and experts are working abroad, helping plant shelter belts, build solar farms, and share desert control techniques. It's like a country that once struggled with famine becoming a global leader in farming technology. China turned its greatest weakness into an exportable strength. For developing nations, the appeal is clear. If deserts can become economic zones instead of dead zones, millions of lives could change. 
For China, it also builds influence, not just as a solar superpower, but as a country shaping how the world fights climate change. But for all the praise, the model isn't perfect. Critics argue that planting vast forests and solar farms comes with risks, and that some lessons might be harder to copy than they look. Despite the achievements, China's desert projects are not without controversy. For every success story, critics point out tough questions about costs, risks, and long-term sustainability. Some scientists warn that mass tree planting in dry areas can backfire. Fast-growing trees may consume too much groundwater, leaving soil drier in the long run. Others note that survival rates for trees in deserts can be low, meaning some areas have to be replanted multiple times. It's like trying to patch a leaking boat. Some repairs hold, but others peel off quickly and you're forced to keep patching again and again. Even solar farms have challenges. Dust storms can cover panels, cutting efficiency. Maintenance costs in remote deserts are high, and balancing ecology with large-scale infrastructure isn't always simple. Some projects have displaced herders or required land use changes that not everyone agreed with. The balance between development, ecology, and local traditions remains delicate. These criticisms don't erase the progress, but they remind us that the desert fight is ongoing. The Green Great Wall and photovoltaic projects are massive experiments, not final victories. And that's where the story leaves us today. A fight that is far from over, but one that has already rewritten what humanity thought was possible against the desert. From shifting sands to seas of solar panels, China's desert story is one of the boldest environmental experiments in human history. A nation once losing land to storms of dust is now building green walls and solar fortresses that can be seen from space. China hasn't defeated the desert, but it has shown that deserts are not destiny. Through mass mobilization, generational planning, and technological leaps, the country has slowed desertification, restored ecosystems, created jobs, and built renewable energy hubs where once there was only barren sand. It's a reminder that problems which look impossible, like holding back the desert, can be tackled with persistence and creativity. Just as past generations built the Great Wall for protection, today's generation is building a new kind of wall, one that protects both people and the planet. The fight is still ongoing, and challenges remain. But China's efforts prove that environmental crises don't have to end in disaster. With vision and scale, deserts can be transformed from threats into opportunities. And as the world faces rising climate challenges, the lesson is clear. The battle against the desert is not just China's story. It's a blueprint for how humanity might fight back against nature's harshest odds.